and of well leakage risk. risk. Uh, Al, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here. Thank you for the introduction. Um, so we have uh, uh, kind of developed a probabilistic tool at TNO to kind of look at well integrity risks and um, particularly have applied this tool to the CO2 injection um, wells. Now, it's been really interesting the past two days to kind of listen to all your talks and kind of uh, see all the challenges, whether it's cap rock integrity, it's micro seismicity, it's, you know, different sort of uh, risks involved. Um, and, and, you know, all of which have to be addressed in one way or the other. And here we've kind of focused on um, particularly the well integrity risk, the risk of leakage around the well bore, um, uh, you know, particularly in a depleted reservoir. As um, I guess Philip uh, mentioned, you know, it, it, depleted reservoirs provide a really good case for us. Um, it's well characterized, it's contained, we know the capacity. And also we have, um, especially offshore, we have uh, facilities already in place. Uh, so a lot of sunk cost there. Um, in terms of well integrity, though, we're injecting really cold CO2. And again, Philip explained it really well um, uh, why the CO2 is cold and what temperatures we're expecting. But we have potentially intermittent injection of cold CO2 in the well bore. The well bore could be newly drilled or it could be an old well. And uh, this causes the casing to shrink uh, potentially more than the cement. And um, potentially leading to debonding of the casing, uh, creation of microannuli. Um, it could also lead to other kinds of failures as well. Then we are increasing formation pressure by injecting the CO2. So we've created potentially a leakage pathway and then we're increasing the pressure gradient, um, which could uh, lead to upward movement of CO2. On top of that, of course, we have chemical interactions. We're not gonna really address that here. Um, but with all this being said, we, there are a lot of open questions in modeling this sort of behavior, but we could come up with mechanical models uh, that can give us some idea of what the stresses in cement would be. Um, but a major issue is um, the uncertainty in the formation and cement properties down hole. So, um, you know, in the cap rock, what is exactly doing its modulus? Um, what would be the in situ cement properties? and so on and so forth. So in this particular tool, we're trying to address this, this issue to look at the uncertainty in, in parameters and how, um, how to resolve that issue. So the ultimate goal for us is uh, to have a tool where you know, an operator with a portfolio of wells after a high level screening, looking at you know, wells that um, very clearly show uh, casing pressure and some well integrity issues, putting those aside, we have uh, selected a few wells and we can run this tool to address, to look at the probability of failure for these wells um, under various operational scenarios. Now we're looking at it uh, through different lenses. We're looking at it you know, uh, on lab experiment side, characterizing uncertainty and parameters, verifying the physics behind um, well and like debonding and uh, making sure our models capture that. Um, essentially also benchmarking and verifying our models. Um, on the other hand, this data will go into the geomechanical models where we do probabilistic, you know, finite element modeling, some ways upscaling the, the well, the lab experiments. But all of this will be put together through a risk assessment framework. Um, here we used a Bayesian belief network. So at the end, we have a tool where operators can look at different parameters, put it together and essentially get a probability of failure for that, for that well. So they can kind of weigh their operational decisions and, and minimize that risk. So here in this talk, I, we're not really focused on the lab experiment part, kind of uh, talk a bit more about the geomechanical modeling and the risk the same assessment framework that uh, we've done. Um, but a very quick overview, um, the lab experiments, uh, that we've done are done in Rice Bike Center for Sustainable Geoenergy. Um, here in Netherlands, this place, uh, this lab focuses on kind of real scale um, uh, well simulations. So we have real scale well bores on site and, you know, we can kind of cement casings and so on. And, and we've generated some of this data and we've, uh, some of it is published. 
And this has allowed us to benchmark and verify some of our models and look at some relationships now between cement damage and, and leakage rates and so on and so forth. So this data and this, uh, these results have been used to build essentially the geomechanical models that you can see here. So the idea is that we have a well and we can take a slice at a certain depth and look at a finite, create a finite element model automatically. You know, we have the formation, we have the casing and the cement and so on. Um, and we've done this using find, uh, Diana finite element package. Um, but here, we really need to track cement stress history to understand when once we start injecting CO2, um, essentially how that cement is going to react. So how we need to know essentially start from the drilling operation, you know, putting the casing in, cementation and completion, if fracturing, you know, hydraulic fracturing uh, happens, um, production phase. And finally, if in case of a depleted reservoir, we have CO2 injection phase. Uh, so all of this needs to be captured. There's a lot of detail in the model I won't bore you with, uh, but at the end, we can kind of know whether the debond debonding could occur, what kind of apertures to expect, whether shear failure is occurring and so on. Now, um, the results of this model, once we do it probabilistically, it's, it can kind of be fed into a uh, dispersion net for net, uh, belief network so that, um, you know, based on certain operational parameters, you can see what is the probability of failure, what is the sort of apertures you can expect um, in, a, in a kind of a graphical way. Now, we've applied this methodology to uh, a, a hypothetical scenario in a depleted field offshore of Netherlands. You know, Philip kind of showed you the, a bigger picture. So you kind of focus on, on one of the fields near Rotterdam. And uh, so we take the formation properties from logs and from different like, reports. Um, we take the well construction from what is already available. And the depth of analysis is kind of in the middle of the rock, cap rock around 3,100 meters depth. So we've collected all this data. There's a lot of information that goes into our models. Uh, then we've divided it into three categories. So the data, it's either fixed deterministic, which is the data that we have a pretty good idea what, what it is, like the casing dimensions or reservoir temperature and so on. The uncertainty is fairly low or it's unimportant. Then we have very deterministic parameters where uh, these are parameters where either the operator has some control over like the CO2 temperature injected, um, or you know we have the average value. So we know if the cement is gonna be relatively on the softer side or average or harder side, um, should we assume it's, it's this fairly strong one or weak in terms of like cement cohesion? Um, you know, what is uh, cement shrinkage value? So these are the parameters that we've Determine. Then we have kind of come up with different cases. So you know, again, soft cement, hard cement, and so on. And um, we do we run our simulations for every combination with these numbers. And in this case, it'll be twenty four um, cases. So finally, we have we did a sensitivity analysis to see kind of what parameters matter the most in terms of their uncertainty impacting the results. So we narrowed it down to eight parameters here that we treat stochastically. So uh, here, you know, we have, for example, Simmons Young's modulus. It's a very important parameter. We might know on average what it should be, but there is a large uncertainty here. Um, so for every case, for every simulation, these eight parameters are randomly selected based on this particular distribution type, based on this mean and standard deviation. You know, we modulus for the formation the same way. Uh, it's, it's rather uncertain. Uh, the in situ uh, minimum horizontal stress is uncertain. The bond strength between casing and cement, the some other cement properties, for example. Now, the way we implement this, uh, I'll try to explain, for example, for case one through uh, 24, um, you know, the first case we select uh, the, the deterministic parameters uh, that we want. And for that, 20,000 simulations. And for each of those, uh, a new set of stochastic parameters. So here we have a large amount of data. We need to understand, we need to kind of think about how to, how to process it. And um, 
we can look at each simulation, find out if there has been any cement failure, what kind of failure, if it's a microannulus formation, uh, what kind of apertures to expect. And we can kind of plot this versus the number of runs. So we have the probability of failure based on the number of runs. And you can see that eventually it kind of flats out. So a thousand simulations seems to be enough to capture the uncertainty in the parameters here. And I've also plotted the aperture for this example. So for this case, there is, it seems like there's an 80% uh, chance of failure. For 80% of the cases, um, it, the well is going to fail or at least the, the microannulus is going to be formed. So we did this for every case. So we have essentially 24,000 uh, simulations. Now, again, it's a lot of information and all of the data will go, will be uh, fed into the Bayesian belief network, but I've kind of summarized the important points here. Um, the casing, so we see failure both at the casing interface and the formation interface. It is more likely that a casing interface uh, will fail during CO2 injection because of the cold temperatures. And uh, so in here, the best case scenario we see on the right, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse here. Um, oops. On the right, you see at minimum, there's a 20% chance, the best case scenario, it's a 20% chance of failure. Worst case scenario, it's around 96%. Uh, we're expecting an average aperture of somewhere between zero almost to 70 microns, which is fairly significant, 70 microns for, for to minimize uh, secure. Uh, CO2 leakage. Um, on this casing interface, the CO2 temperature is a, is a very important factor here. So that could, uh, that essentially controls the aperture or the, the probability of failure, and it's followed by cement shrinkage. On the other hand, on the formation side of things, it's, it's a bit more stable. It is less likely to fail. The best case scenarios don't show any failure. And the worst case scenario could be up to 80% chance of failure, but the apertures are also a bit, a bit smaller. But also interestingly, it's not necessarily controlled by CO2 temperature, actually. It's more controlled by uh, the shrinkage levels in cement. So for it is more likely this would happen on a highly shrinking cement. So if the shrinkage is expected to be low or negligible, uh, this wouldn't, won't be as much of a, much of a problem on this side. So as I mentioned, all of this information is kind of compiled in, um, in the Bayesian belief network system. So here, this is based on the input parameters that we've had. And uh, you know, companies can look at, okay, if, what sort of input parameters or operational parameters they can use. And based on that, they can see, let's say, debonding of the casing in cement, what sort of chances there are to have no debonding or a bit of debonding or at this level of uh, aperture. And if they change, for example, the CO2 temperature, uh, what sort of debonding would they expect and what sort of probabilities of failure they can anticipate. So just a quick review, uh, we have developed this probabilistic well integrity tool. We think that we need to address the uncertainty in the input parameters. Um, we've applied this to a case study in uh, offshore Netherlands uh, for in CO2 injection in a depleted reservoir. And uh, we want, we think that this tool can be used as a decision-making um, tool to weigh operational decisions with risk. So uh, we can change the design parameters to minimize the risk, to reduce it to the, what, what we are comfortable with. Um, there are some interesting also findings here. Well, in terms of best practices where we've noticed that if we place um, the, if you land the packer on the lower end of the cap rock, uh, this essentially adds an, a cushion of completion fluids between this tubing and the casing, which actually acts, acts as an insulator. So even if it's a, a water-based fluid, there is a 10 to 20 degrees increase in casing temperature, which essentially drops the probability of failure quite significantly. And if even better, uh, there is an oil-based uh, completion fluid there, that could really enhance the, the increase the casing temp the temperature that the casing will experience. So this sort of conclusions uh, could come out of you know by, by changing these dif different parameters we can we can essentially look at use our tool to minimize uh, the risk and to the point that we're comfortable with. Of course there are still a lot of open questions we're really focusing right now on 
understanding the initial state of stress and cement, um, because you know it, it is the foundation assumption that goes into the models. Those are really important. Um, impact of cyclical loads. So you know sometimes it is unavoidable to stop injection and then restarting it, and there will be uh, we need to design for uh, those cyclical loads. Um, chemical interactions, they could be good sometimes and they could be they could be bad sometimes. And we need to understand exactly what for a particular condition, what we, what to expect. Um, and finally, you know, what if the cement does get damaged? You know, what sort of what, what does that mean? What sort of leakages uh, should we expect from that um, over time? So that was a quick overview of, of the work we've, uh, we've done. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for your time. All right, excellent. Thank you, Thank you Al. Al. Appreciate it. So our next speaker is uh, uh, our next speaker is Hadi uh, Haji Beji. So Hadi is associate professor at TU Delft at the Faculty of 